Welcome, fellow explorers, to Project Takedis. In this first episode, we will go over the planet and its stellar neighbors. Our first stop is Demeter. Demeter is an F-type main sequence star with a mass of 1.1 solar masses and a diameter of 1.056 suns. Demeter has a surface temperature of 6,183 Kelvin, meaning that it is hotter than our sun. This results in Demeter being brighter than the sun, having a luminosity of 1.46 for for times that of the sun. Demeter's habitable zone ranges from 1.15 for astronomical units to 1.66 to astronomical units. Our next stops are the binary planets of Tachetis and Sherik. Tachetis and Sherik are a pair of binary planets that orbit 1.40 astronomical units away from Demeter, directly in the middle of the habitable zone. We will go over them one at a time. Tachetis is the main focus of this project, being the only planet in the Demeter system to support life. It is a small Earth-like planet with a mass of 0.63 Earths and a radius of 0.88 Earths. Tachetis has an atmosphere quite similar to Earth's, having a similar ratio of gases, except for the lower amount of oxygen, around 19%. Tachetis also has a ring, formed from its past inner moon being torn apart by its gravity. We will cover Tachetis in much greater detail later, however, we must keep exploring its stellar neighbors. Sherik is a mid-sized desert planet with a mass of 0.835 Earths and a radius of 0.9 for 6 Earths. Sherik was once a lush world covered in water. However, due to its thick atmosphere, it couldn't sustain its oceans for long. Over time, all of the water evaporated, forming a thick, hazy atmosphere of water vapor and other gases. However, water remains at the poles, although Sherik is still considered uninhabitable. Tachetis and Sherik both share one moon, named Pady. Pady is a large moon with a mass of 2.1 lunar masses and a radius of 1.166 moons. Pady orbits both Tachetis and Sherik, but not the planets themselves. Instead, Pady orbits their common center of mass, or bare center. This gives Pady the most stable orbit around its parent planets as possible. Now that we've gone over Tachetis's stellar neighbors, let's explore the planet in greater detail. Tachetis's small mass and radius of 0.630 and 0.880 Earths means that the planet will have an overall softer gravitational pull than Earth, with it being only 0.813 times the strength of Earth's. This may mean that the creatures of Tachetis may grow too much larger sizes than animals on Earth, but are slightly held back by the lower amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. Speaking of the atmosphere, Tachetis's atmosphere is quite similar to Earth's, being made up of 79.7 to 6% nitrogen, 19.7% to oxygen, 0.7 for percent carbon dioxide, 0.93% argon, and lower quantities of other gases. Tachetis is very geologically active, thanks to the gravitational pull of both Sherik and Pady. This results in Tachetis being littered with oceanic mountains, volcanoes, and other geologic structures. As a result, the oceans of Tachetis have several strange attributes, one of which being the isolation of currents into specific areas of the ocean. The undersea mountains provide a wall for the currents to run along, resulting in them looping in the same area constantly. Some areas are dominated by fast currents, while others are dominated by slow currents. This may pose some strange challenges for the native life forms, but that won't matter much, as life on the planet at this point is non-existent. The last thing we must discuss are the continents of Tachetis. We shall see how the continents of Tachetis drift from the first life to the present day. I will show you how they drift now. The continents are named Pugna, Liyui, and Simeo. They form a supercontinent known as Puglasim. Over time, Puglasim begins to break into three separate land masses, forming a shallow sea in between the three continents. Eventually, Puglasim fully splits apart, separating the ecosystems of the three continents. At the same time, 
Liyue also begins to split apart, creating a new continent named Vige. As this happens, the continents of Pugna and Simeo begin to drift towards one another, while Liyue and Vige drift northward. Eventually, Pugna and Simeo merge into a new supercontinent named Pugsime. While this happens, Liyue begins to drift towards the equator, leaving Vige completely isolated from the rest of the continents. As Liyue approaches the supercontinent of Pugsime, it begins to split once more, while Vige begins drifting southward. When Pugsime finally splits apart, Liyue and Simeo merge at the equator, forming another new supercontinent named Lassimu. Meanwhile, the continents of Pugna and Fide drift towards the poles, confined to completely isolated existences. And this now marks the end of our celestial journey to Takedas and its stellar neighbors. We have seen the parent star, planets, and their one and only moon. In the next episode, we will discover the weird and wonderful newly evolved life forms that inhabit Takedas' early oceans. Special thanks to the fan artists on Discord who submitted fan art for this episode. You all have made this episode look a lot better than it would have been without your help. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share your ideas for what life forms may evolve on planet Takedas. See you in the next episode.